Tops are gender specific. In other words, there are male plants and there are female plants. And actually the only purpose of the male plant is to pollinate the female plant so that these little cones can develop. The lovely little cone-like fruit of the female hops plant provides medicine in the form of teas and tinctures and topicals. It is often used in beer, um, and we're going to find a little history about that in a moment. There's also a surprising discovery between the chemical constituent of hops and hemp. So, hi, I'm Mary Bourne, traditional naturopath, and I love sharing natural remedies with people. Natural remedies have been around for hundreds, even thousands of years, and they work on people, sometimes pets, and they've been around like that because of their safety. So a lot of people have been scared about taking herbal medicine. And of course, we know why people will be scared into doing something. It's because there's an ulterior method of somebody else creating a profit. So I really feel that people need to check things out, understand what it is, the pros and cons, and to see whether or not that is something that you need to look into to support your own health. Maybe whatever you're doing right now isn't working and you're searching for other things that may help. So hopefully you found this channel and that you will share it with others. And um, this is the health to home version. There are two other uh, gardening with granny and uh, also the herbal hour. So in hops, we, we understand that the history of hops has been around for quite some time. Uh, it is a climbing vine belonging to the genus Humulus in the family cannabis A. Yes, cannabis. Okay, we're going to get into that in a little bit later. Hops likely originated in China, but the first documented use in the 8th century when Benedictine monks used them for brewing in a Bavarian abbey outside of Munich, Germany. Now, you know, people think of alcohol as being a bad thing, but alcohol had some very important helper, helping um, chemicals that supported good digestion, a good immune system, and watered down beer was very acceptable for children like in Germany, as watered down wine is often thought of uh, acceptable in uh, Italy and France. It is not the purpose of alcohol to make you drunk. It is when somebody abuses things that that is the end result. So prior to the use in beer, hops were cultivated as early as 736 BC. Um, and they, so it has a history, a history of safety, not of drunkenness, but actually there are nutrients in beer that really help. It is a fermented beverage. And we now know that ferments help with good gut uh, motility, uh, support in digestion. So there's a lot of benefits in that. Hops likely was originated in China um, and the Chinese used it for medicinal purposes. One of the chemical constituents in hops is called xanthohumol. Now xanthohumol is a, a 
prenylated flavonoid of the female, this little cone-like thing called inflorescences um, of the hop plant. And in recent years, various beneficial xanthohumal effects, including anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, hypoglycemic, which means it helps to reduce high blood sugar, and anti-cancer effects. So there's lots of studies being performed on this valuable herb and how it can help medicinally support balancing the body. And this was an article I found in the NIH Gov link, and I will link it in the description below, and you can open that up. Uh, sometimes there's a little chevron uh, down arrow, or there says more or whatever, but there is more, and that's where I attach all of the links uh, for which I got the information. And in natural medicine, we would rather use the whole plant, or in this case, the whole bloom or the cone, um, as there are balancing properties in that uh, it is known to support calming of the nervous system. In pharmacologically based medicine, it is all about synthesizing. What could they do to chemically create these active ingredients so that they can make a drug because you really can't take hops and patent it. You, um, they are trying when they use genetically modified food that that can be patented because it's not real food. Real food cannot be patented. So um, in also there is um you know, drugs work in Petri dishes. They are tested in Petri dishes and then uh, assumed that they're going to work the same way in the body. And then they will use often animals to uh, like pigs and mice and monkeys and to, to see if they can get the same result. But we humans, <laughs> we're a different species. We, um, we eat differently. Each one of us has our own platform for which we want to uh, run our lives. And uh, oftentimes that cannot be duplicated and you can't duplicate results like you can in a Petri dish. So, um, when you take a whole herb, the general working of that herb supports body in the certain ways. So in other words, we're not working with the disease that we're trying to, we, we didn't say that hops is going to cure diabetes. What we said was that hops has a chemical constituent that seems to balance blood sugar. Now it's not gonna make the person who's hypoglycemic even more hypoglycemic. That would be rare. And you can't say never on anything. So it is important for people to have a better understanding of what they're taking in to their body. Never put anything in your body that you don't understand what the purpose of that is or how it's going to, how your body's going to respond to it. So speaking of which, I like to use Nature Sunshine because of the quality control of this company. There's, if, you, if it says hops, there's not gonna be anything else added to this product except hops. If it's on the label, it's in the bottle. Now we know hops has a history of calming and um, supporting the nervous system. And it is a common ingredient in a lot of products. However, there are a lot of products that are not quality controlled like nature sunshine. 
So that's why I prefer to use um, Nature Sunshine products. I've trusted it for over 40 years and um, so has my family. So hops is known to have this anthohumol and that possesses antioxidant properties. Antioxidants protect the body. <clears throat> they protect it against radiation. They protect uh, against um, things that harm the body. They support better health. So um, antioxidants are very important. And this is one way you can get a wonderful uh, anti-inflammatory um, product and see how it works for you. Um, I do have a link in the description below for 25% um, off the product or anything that you purchase through that link. And so it would be a good way to, you know, to investigate, find out, is it good for you? So let's get to this cannabinoid thing. So recently, I want to say within the last 10 years, uh, science scientists develop, found a new body system. Now we know about the digestive system, the respiratory system, the skeletal system, but we never knew how all of these could be linked together and had this messaging that occurred. And it is through the endocannabinoid system that the body connects itself. The body and the mind are connected through this system. It is constantly doing a balance and check of what's going on, how can I support you, what do you need, and it is the endocannabinoid system that does this. Now, there are two safe herbs that help the endocannabinoid system that connect to the receptors. Hemp is one we've known for a long time. And I just recently found that hops is also um, supportive of the endocannabinoid system. In other words, it can support the balancing that occurs through that system. Now I put a link to a very short video in the description below that explains more about the endocannabinoid system. Um, it, like anything else, like beer, can be abused. And the hemp and uh, the hops, hemp and hops, are low if no of the THC. Now, THC is the factor that you can get some addictive personalities can get addicted to. And um, that is um, when they grow cannabis, people cannot know exactly how much THC is in a particular plant unless they go through the process of um, researching or uh, understanding the particulars in cannabis. So I, not a favor of uh, cannabis as a um, support for pain, but I am in very much favor of hemp and hops when it comes to helping the body balance out why that pain is occurring. Pain is a gift. It is a signal to tell you <clears throat> something's going wrong. You're not treating the body correctly. And you're not giving it what it needs. And a lot of us do that. So I feel that, um, you know, anything can be abused. Uh, but if you use a safer product, then the uh, abuse, you're going to have to take a lot of that product to do any abuse. Plant medicine has been safely used for centuries. However, if you are already taking medicine, you really need to check with your doctor. You don't want to take something that's going to exacerbate the medicine that you're on. 
and um, you you don't want to um, make it so that that medicine isn't giving you the effects that um, your doctor is looking for. I would um, encourage you to to do some research on this wonderful plant. Hops can be so beneficial, um, and I'm myself just learning about this very valuable uh, product and um, herb. So I'm learning right along with you. But the endocannabinoid system is a complex action that occurs in our body. And I encourage you to find out more about this system. Um, it is uh, very, very interesting. Um, it's brand new. It's like, I think there ought to be more research uh, spent on this system because I think it can be the link to why we're so out of balance in this country. Plant medicine is one thing that I am passionate about. <clears throat> And um, I teach, um, I've got hundreds now of, of videos where I've talked about herbs and herbal medicine. I've also talked about food being our medicine. And one never knows when that supply chain is going to be, you know, you go to the grocery store and what you're hoping to find there, there isn't. Uh, so we're going to have to look at other um, options as to how we can feed our bodies what it needs to be healthy. And <clears throat> I think you should learn as much as you can. There are lots of videos. They're not just my videos. There's lots of other videos out there about plant medicine and how you can uh, make your own medicine. Um, be careful about what you're using. <laughs> Make sure that the plant is safe and legal. <laughs> um, so, you know, um, if you are searching for health, your focus will be on health. If you're constantly worried about disease, that's where your focus is going to be. So I, um, I hope that you're uh, enjoying these videos on plant medicine and that you share them with other people. If you would like individual help, you can contact me at Dr. Mary at bornforhealth.com. I would be um, very willing to uh, answer and help you in any way I can uh, find research for you uh, uh, about different things. The natural medicine doctors do not work on disease. So don't ex uh, expect me to say what can, you know, you ask what you can do about diabetes. I'm not gonna answer that because we don't work on disease. We don't prescribe for disease. We work on what's happening with the body. Why is the body creating this particular thing? And how can we get it back into balance? The purpose of these videos is to help you understand about herbs and natural health. And <clears throat> I do have three formats. This is one of them. This format is usually between 15 and 20 minutes. Uh, it's called Help to Home. I also have Gardening with Granny. That is three to five minutes. And sometimes when I do a garden tour, it's a little bit longer or if we're visiting someplace and touring, uh, it'll be a little bit longer. Um, and then there's the final format is the herbal hour and it does, it lasts about an hour, but it helps you understand the systems of the body and how the body uh, works to create better health. And if you like these videos, please give me a thumbs up if you, um, would like to comment on it. I'd love to hear from you. And I hope that you subscribe to my channel and share the information with others. Um, until next time, this is Dr. Mary for the health of it.